Hi everyone, my name is Anirudh. So uh, today we'll be um, covering the concept called Random Forest on Somlink. Uh, random Forest is one of the known major on Somlink methods in the field of machine learning. Well, the word forest itself uh, defines the fact that it's a combination of trees. And random will come later on. So basically it's a combination of multiple trees that are grown together to to average out effect of of the 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 cons of a decision tree. Now first of all let's think about a decision tree. What happens in a decision tree? One of the major problems with decision tree is the overfitting because of being overly reliant on the training data. However that require that can be taken care of by certain pruning methods, but they are still not sufficient. So in 2000, in 1991, uh, Professor Bremen he come he came up with a concept called random forest, which got you know quite popular by 2001, and and this idea was to grow thousands of trees at the same time and do certain sampling. Let's see how we go about it. So you'll learn what are ensembling techniques, introduction to random forest, understanding random forest algorithm, and hands-on. So in ensembling techniques, we create multiple predictors for the same problem and make predictions by aggregating the predictions, which leads to better predictions. So let's say you got first you, the orange one is is mod, is you know is modeling with sample one, the black one is modeling with sample two, and ensembling is the average. Now, average, if you look at it, is doing a much better job of actually segregating orange and the black. Can you see that? Okay. So, run, random forest is an ensemble of decision trees where training data set is recursively partitioned into different decision trees based on value of a parameter. Now, what happens, what, what is meant by what is meant by uh, total number of, uh, I mean, by recursive partition? So basically, you have a data set in, in you have a data set in, in your trained data. What you do is, you basically do a bootstrap sampling of the data. So that means, um, you take a data, you take a record, you put it in your sample, and you put it back. You take a record again, and you put it back. And you repeat this process for exactly the total number of times, exactly to, exactly equal to the total number of your of your uh, uh, trained data set. So, for example, if you've got 100 records in your trained data data set, you will take 100 samples. So as per bootstrapping, I'm sorry, there are some firecrackers near nearby my house, so you might just hear the sound. Uh, so, in in boosting, the, the funniest thing is, oh, sorry, in random forest, the funniest thing is that this bootstrapping is going to allow only two thirds of the unique uh, sample data sets. That means your sample data sets would be two thirds in terms of the uniqueness in your original data set. So that's one sample and you grow thousands of trees using those samples. So that's the, that's the basic way in which your data is partitioned. Sorry. Understanding random forest. So there's a there's this uh, uh, there's this uh, you're not very uh, you're you're not very decisive about watching a movie. Let's say Edge of Tomorrow. So either you ask your best friend or you can ask a group of friends. So if you ask a group of friends, obviously, then you'll get a much better understanding. Otherwise, a, a particular person can tell you something which is very specific to his or her likings, right? So asking group of friends and averaging out definitely plays a much better role, right? Okay, so, so understanding random forest, it's nothing but growing trees in parallel and then averaging out the effect of each tree. That's it, well, that, that's on it. And on the hands-on, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, of course, do certain uh, programming. But let's finish the presentation first. So the random first advantage it is it is robust against overfitting. Why? Well, because it's averaging out the effect. It's averaging out the the total effect of random forest of of a decision tree. I'm sorry. So 
basically it can be used for both regression as well as for classification. It gives better results with the increasing number of examples. Well, of course it, has, it can because your bootstrap sample will also grow. It can be used for clustering, statistical inference as well as feature selection. Yes, it has a, it has a way in which it can do some certain feature selections. Uh, ensembling method. So let me let me write down something like uh, so in this so what you see here is feature selection right so feature selection uh, re when random forest creates a tree let's say it's creating one tree okay like this so at each node basically it is supposed to have a sample of variables only. Okay, so what does the sample of variables do? So instead of using all the possible variables, it only takes a sample of subset of them. And based on the concept for Gini index for regression, it is uh, it is the sum of squared or RSS as we call it. And for the classification problem, it is Gini index. Okay. So Gini index basically is doing nothing, but <clears throat> Gini index is doing nothing, but basically it is looking at each variable and seeing its importance. And how is a variable deemed important or not? Well, it sees how much has the Gini index decreased by using a particular variable. So if the drop in the Gini index is more with respect to a with respect to a, a, a particular split that particular variable is gets the higher uh, chances in the uh, in becoming the root node. So at each node as in the split it takes a subset of the variables and it applies that to that node using RSS or Gini index. So basically your random forest is, is sampling of data, sampling of one is data as well as sampling of features. So it works with data as well as features at the same time in terms of sampling. So once it, so when, when it is creating a tree, it is looking at a specific sample of the data using bootstrapping and looking at very subset of that total number of variables using, uh, using the sampling for features. Now the good thing is, the good thing is, or the advantage is, for example, if a, there is a particular, particular node, a particular variable rather, which is very high indicator, very strong predictor. So it is likely that if we don't take the sample of that predictor columns, then it is likely that that it the node which is or the variable which is a very strong predictor will become the root node. In most of the cases. Hence, all the trees that we grow would be correlated, and that is where random forest plays a very handy role. It only looks at those algorithms or those, I'm sorry, those uh, columns which are in which are in the sample for that particular split. Got it? Questions so far? Oh, RSS, uh, okay. So RSS is your residual sum of squares. Okay, so for regression, the cost function is the RSS. These distances. And for classification, it is always the Gini index, which is summation p uh, into 1 minus p. p is the proportion, p is the proportion of one class in a particular region. Okay, so that's how, that's how we use RSS and, and, and Gene index for our 
a particular kind of problems that we are solving. The model tend to be very large and they are slow to train, this is fine. Its, randomi it's randomization parameter needs, it needs to be set as well, number of nodes, number of trees, randomization of instance variables, which is fine, we'll do that. Um, of course, you can learn all of that in a weekend batch in Edureka for data science. I am the one who is the instructor for that course. Maybe not for this one, but in most of the courses, I'm the instructor. Um, the total online live classes are 30 hours. Okay. Um, so basically, this particular course would, would make you involved in certain case studies on each, each of these algorithms. And I'm going to take the same case study in this session right now. Any questions so far before we move on to the hands-on? Okay. So we'll start the session now. So the first is uh, a library random forest. So we're doing this in R. So the first is library random forest. This command basically will this command basically will, um, or let me just clear it out. So, random forest library in R is given by random in capital F. We'll also use a library called caret, because that will also have certain function you want to define. The, pro the problem we're going to solve is for Iris. Iris is N Edgar's Anderson data. What it does is basically, in the famous Fisher's uh, Iris data set. It basically has three, uh, three. Um, um, what do you call it? Uh, um, species of flowers, which are measured using their sepal and petal length. So if I just write iris, then what you see is there are 150 and sepal dot length sepal dot width, petal dot length, and petal dot width are the four variables which are used for defining the species of the flower. It, it is either setosa, vicecular, or virginica. Okay, so we're going to use this data set to predict whether this can be used for some random, if, if that can be used for uh, uh, predicting the species of the uh, of the flower. So the first command is create data partition. So what it does is basically it divides the data into 70 percent. Point 0.7 means 70 percent, and this creates a training index. I N train. So this particular command helps to create a training data set. Then training iris in train, which is nothing but using training. Using training, we could train this uh, in train index. We could create a training data set using iris, in train, and comma. Okay, now, now this in train basically, oh, there's a question. Okay, so, and this train data set would be used to train on the data and testing will. See the actual out. Actual, we'll compare the actual and the predicted values. So if I click on end row training, I have three to six rows for training and one to four testing. I think this is not correct. Yeah, so I have these three data sets now. If I do end row training, it will be yeah one and five for training and forty five for testing. So basically. Your iris is a data frame with four uh, variables. One is first four are numbers, and fourth is the species, which is the predicted column. Okay. So I run RF random forest species data training equal entry equal to 1000, m try equal to four. Entry is the number of trees I want to grow, and m try equals to four means number of variables I want to be considered at each split. Okay, so 
table. So this would create a fun this would create a object of random forest RF. Okay, we will try to predict species which is the fourth column using all the columns using dot data equals to training number of trees that I want to grow is four and number of variables that you want to use at each period is four. If I do a table, if I do a predict testing in this, so it seems it has predicted everything correctly except Virginica, which has been which is which it has predicted 13 times correctly, but twice it has called it Versacular. Okay. So if I plot RF. The RF would say the testing error is 2 by 45. Okay, which is 0 0.04. Okay, and if I now with this, I come to classification. So what I've done is classification in random forest. Okay. But if I can do regression in random forest, I think I just missed one thing. Let me just put summary RF or maybe just RF. Yep. So it says it's a random forest classification number of trees 1000, each period is 4. Out of bag estimate for error rate. Out of bag I'll tell you later on. So there is there is this is 0 0.085 error in the uh, for the uh, for the uh, for one class and 0 0.014 for one class. Okay. This is the out of bag estimates. Okay. So that brings me to the to the end of end of classification in random forest. In in regression, I'm going to use a data set called Boston. So the Boston data set is nothing but if I do a quick Boston, then basically I have to calculate the average or the median value of a household of a house based on certain parameters. Let's see what those parameters are. The prime per capita prime rate in the town, proportion of land owned over for lots, proportion of non vital business, uh, in this chart so will flow across it or not, nitrogen oxide concentrations, average number of rooms, and blah 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 blah, black number of black ratio, the proportion of black I'm sorry, lowest status of the population, and MEDV, median value of the owner occupied home, so I need to find value of MEDV. Again I do the same thing. <coughs> then I create training and testing data set. Now dimension of training is 3 to 6 and 14. Dimension of testing is 15 and 14. And dimension of testing is 506 and 14. Seed 1 to 3. Why do we do seed? We do seed in order to avoid any unnecessary random generation. So we have, if we are using algorithms like which make use of random numbers, uh, it is important that you put seed. Otherwise, every time you run it, it will create certain other numbers. So now what I've done is I'm plot, I'm running this entire thing for all the variables from 1 to, from 3 to 14 in order to choose which one is the best algorithm. So I have put in m tri equals to k which is put in a loop for k in sequence 3 to 14. Okay. So if I run this, so now it is running 15 random forests one after the other. So it might just take, take some time. Okay. 
okay so let me just change it 3 maybe 10 It's still running. Okay, so it has run successfully. Let let's let's plot the right. So it cl clearly shows that at m3 equals to nine, it has got the minimum. It got the minimum uh, error. On the prediction, so so basically you could write m try equal to nine and run it again. So basically, what we did was we ran a, 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 a we ran it in a for loop to find which is giving the best, and then we got the best one eventually. So if I do a plot predict this, I'll get my predictions and I'm plotting in this way. Okay, and if I do a Plot LM. Sorry. So this is where you see the red line is. It should coincide with the zero line, but it still is doing a pretty decent job. So if I write a very very important plot. Oops, sorry. So if I write very much very very important plot, then it will show you the top two variables with respect to percentage increase in MSE. So in, in node pretty it does not really help. So in percentage increase in MSE is the parameter on which we are going to run the algorithm. Okay, so this is how it gives the feature selection, how which one are more important features. Okay, so if I find so this way it gives the most important features in the decreasing order. Okay. So, so that's it in the hands-on. So now it's time for you to ask questions. I'll have, I'll give you next five minutes just to frame your questions. No, so there's no question. Uh, fine then, uh, in case you've got any questions, you can Certainly uh, ask me or ping me back and I'll be more than happy to take it. How could I get the dot R file? Um, okay, I'll, 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 you want the R file, okay. So let me put, let me put the R commands here in the, in the front, in the chat window. I've pasted the content in the chat. You can have a look. Thanks for joining. Uh, I hope you got some understanding of what a random forest is. Uh, I'll try to I'll try to uh, send this R, I've sent this R file. Try to run it against certain data sets, and you'll you'll get a better understanding of what Rhino Forest is. Okay, so then uh, bye for now. I hope there are no more questions. As I kept 40 minutes, 20 minutes, especially for the questions. Okay, bye then. Thank you so much for joining. Have a good night.